Yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Gripper back here with another video for you guys today. And in this video, we're going to be discussing why Tops destroyed 2023 Top Series 1 because of one simple thing. So before we get to that, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes here on today's video. Thank you guys so much for a great month of February as this is, of course, the last day of February. And we had an absolutely tremendous February. This was, because of you guys, the best channel month I have had on the channel ever since I started making videos. It's all thanks to you guys. We had a lot of good videos. A lot of people showed up, a lot of people liked, a lot of people left comments, and that's all thanks to you guys. So I'm asking one more time in the month of February for 100 likes on this video. That would mean a lot if you guys can do that for me. And we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away hobby packs of 2023 Top Series 1 to one lucky person. All you guys got to do is be publicly subscribed, like this video, Turn on post notifications for all the content right here on the channel. And last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section what you're most looking forward to in the 2023 MLB season. I'll pick a winner once I hit 6,000 subscribers. So there is that. So boy, where do we start? So before getting to the actual topic, I want to say, I opened a blaster box of 2023 Top Series 1 for a channel members only video. And I was like, eh, you mean, just, just watch the video and find out. I'm not going to say it was terrible, but neither am I going to say it was great by any means. And yes, I did open it, as you could see here, for proof. Because I know someone's going to say in the comments, you didn't actually open one. Uh, yeah, I did. Look, here's the box. Nothing in it. Here, look, I even saved the wrapper to even prove to you. Look, blaster box wrapper, no H on it or nothing. So there you go. I recorded my channel members only video. Uh, that will be going live in two days on Thursday. So if you're interested, channel memberships are only five bucks a month. Uh, I do a lot of good videos on there. I'm really unfiltered on there. So if you like to hear me cuss, that's the way to do it. Um, so if you're interested, five bucks a month, uh, you could, there's a joint tab that should be there. And if you're interested, there's that. So you could see me open that blaster box of series one. But at the same time, you know, this, this gets into the point of the video. You know, retail, I was not pleased with that box at all. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. You know, they're $27, okay? So let's round up to 30 I got probably... 15-ish back, I'd like to say 15. It wasn't a bad blaster box by no means. By no means why I say it was bad, but it was not good either. Believe me, it was not good. Compared to previous year's blaster boxes that I would open and things like that, and nothing, nothing compared, nothing compared to, to that blaster box at all. So if you're interested, check that video out. You'll see it for yourself. Let me know how I did, and you could be the judge, but I think I did okay. There's one card that I pulled that makes up for the majority of the, the loss that I, I got opening that box. So I was probably better off keeping it sealed, but it is what it is at the end of the day. I did it for content. There you go. So that brings me into the point of today's video. Why Tops destroyed 2023 Top Series 1? And I mean destroyed as in the retail format as we all know the hobby format which is by far the most superior format of this release um jumbos and hobbies for that matter are great now jumbos are far better than the hobbies but hobbies are a good alternative they're a good alternative if you're gonna buy a hundred dollars in series one just go buy a hobby box or i mean they're 90 something dollars now they're going up in price jumbos i think i said this in yesterday's video but Fanatics put Jumbos back on um, their site, and they were $200. So I don't know if they're sold out right now. It's literally been like a day and a half since they put them on there. They could have been sold out by now. I don't know. But when I checked yesterday, they're $200. So they're going up. 
Fanatics even did it themselves. Uh, I do expect the hobby boxes to sell out relatively soon because, I mean, you could ask anybody you know, and you could probably see it for yourself. Series 1 is not selling anywhere. Now, some places might sell out others. Like, let's say maybe a, a Pittsburgh downtown Target or like Orlando, Florida or like a Dallas, Texas Target or something like that. I expect Series 1 to sell out in those places. But if you live in like Hickville or something like that, or like in a small city like as do I, it's not going to sell out. Now, I'm going to be at Walmart today. When this video goes live around this time, I will be going to my weekly trip at Walmart. Now, I go to Walmart Tuesday, Thursday, sometimes Saturday mornings because my vendor does stock Saturday mornings now. And then Sunday, I go grocery shopping with my grandpa on Sunday. So I go to this local Walmart about four times a week, mostly three, but sometimes I had a fourth in there. And I'll tell you what, Series 1 did stock at my Walmart, and I was there on Sunday afternoon. So a day after, a day and a half, because they stock Friday night right when the store ends. Then Sunday morning is when the fresh stock gets put out, or well, the people see it for the first time, right? And when I went on Sunday afternoon, it was all there. Not one singular thing was bought until I put I bought one of those blaster boxes. And you'll see for yourself how I did. Spoiler alert, kind of mid, but still. Um, you know, my brother told me something. And, you know, we, we were just having a casual conversation watching the Pirates play today. And we were talking about Series 1. And he brought up a very good point that I honestly did not think about when I talk about Series 1. He said to me, Tops made retail bad, get this, get this, to ruin the flippers and the scalpers. Now, I have some counterpoints to this because I don't necessarily, uh, necessarily believe that's all true, but... There is some truth in that in between the lines, okay? To say that Scalpers ruined Series 1 and top for that matter, I mean, that's the truth. I mean, we all saw what happened in 2020. You know, these people who lost their jobs and or were not working at the time because of the event of 2020, because I can't say the word on YouTube because they don't like that, but... Um, you know, the event of 2020 happened and people were just sitting at home and they wanted to make a quick buck. And I guess sports cards fell casualty to that. Anything could have fell casual casualty to that. Fun fact, action figures even fell casualty to that. As you guys know, um, I don't know if I told you this. I probably, if you're a long time subscriber on the channel, I am an action figure collector myself. If you don't believe me. Look, Moon Knight here. Here's one of the Marvel Legends I have, Moon Knight. All right, I just took him off the shelf. The shelf's literally right next to me. Let me put him back, okay? I collect Marvel Legends. And in 2020, people scalped Marvel Legends as well as other things like Star Wars and WWE. You couldn't find anything new on the shelf. And then if you weren't there when it was getting put out, someone was buying it and reselling it for double the price. That's just how the market was in 2020. And somewhat bled into 2021. Luckily, that ended pretty early on into 2021. And ever since, we have been in this new phase with, with sports cards. Not really much action figures because the scalpers in the action figure realm completely went away. There's not much of that no more at all, luckily. Uh, maybe for exclusive stuff like a Walmart or a Target exclusive action figure. But for the most part... Um, the prices on those have skyrocketed in and of itself. Something like that was $20. Like, let's say, um, in 2020, a Marvel Legend at Walmart was $15. Now they are $25. So keep that in mind. And in Target, in some instances, are $28. So keep that in mind, right? You know, but same thing can be applied to baseball cards. I mean, baseball cards were $20 for the longest time. Now, blaster boxes are $27.99 in some places. Like mine. My Walmart are $27.99. So... You know, to say scalpers ruin baseball cards, there are some truth to that because, you know, for the longest time, geeks were lining up at Myers at 6 in the morning and, and you know, waiting in line at Target when they saw the vendor and Walmart. And I was, I did that for a little bit because I had nothing else better to do. Like last summer, my vendor stocked, uh, the old vendor that is, now they have a new one, but the old one stocked Fridays at 1 p.m. 
And, you know, I do nothing on Fridays at 1 p.m. because this is my job. This is what I do. So it's not like I had to go to an actual workplace. This is like, this is legit my job. People don't, you know, think that, but YouTube is my job. Um, you know, so I go and, you know, I do that. But for the most part, I'm not one to scalp. See, I'm a collector. I'm not one to go out and buy all that to resell. I never did that, never will. I think that's just loser mentality, if I'm going to be honest with you. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I get why they did it because they weren't working. But, you know, now we're in a situation that tops made retail worthless because of that. Right. And there is some truth to that. There is a lot of truth to that. But at the same time, people are trying to say, and this is my counter argument to this video, they're trying to say that there was a parallel shift. And what I mean by that is, I guess if you work out the odds and the numbers, it shows that the majority of the parallels that were taken from retail are now in the jumbo and hobby formats, which, again, I agree with you to some extent. But you can't tell me that this stuff is more printed than last year's product because that has a lot to do with it as well. It's not so much the fact that there's a parallel shift. There may be a parallel shift, but at the same time, that parallel shift is added on to the increased print runs, right? And that's what caused Series 1 retail, in particular Series 1, and I assume we're going to be talking a lot about this in the months to come with other products. But as for now, it's just Series 1, that's what happened. I believe Tops did this to counteract the scalpers because let's look at it like this. Let's look at it like this, okay? If you're buying retail and only retail, I'm going to call you a casual. If that offends you, I don't know what to tell you because that's what retail is now. It's for casual hobby collectors. It's for the people who can't afford a hundred plus dollar hobby box, although now they're cheaper more than ever before the last couple of years, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing, but at the same time, retail is suffering because of that. But at the same time, if you're a collector like me, you're buying hobby formats. I mean, retail is a thing of the past at this point for me, but you know, for a, a channel members only video from time to time, I will, you know, do an opening like I did with series one, but, but for the most part, I do buy hobby going forward. But if you buy retail, and this pro this shouldn't offend anybody, but still, you're a, you're a casual collector. You're casual, right? You just collect for fun. One box here, one box there. When my check comes in, oh yeah, let me buy a box just to have some fun, or let me buy some to open with my son or daughter, or maybe even the wife, you know, something like that, right? That's what retail is meant for now. And in Top's eyes, in fanatics, they look at it as this. If you're going to buy the cheap stuff, then you should have legit no shot at pulling a card to make your money back. Like I told you in the opening, like I told you in the opening here when I just, I told you I opened a series one blaster box. I in nowhere, nowhere at all made even close to the money back on that blaster box. There was one good card I pulled and it's really not that good, all things considered. Decent. It goes for about nine, ten bucks. I looked on eBay after the video was done. But still, I mean, that that's nowhere near $30 worth of value back. So in top size, what they do is they're like, well, if you're going to buy the cheap stuff, you kind of have no shot now to pull anything good. As a collector like I am, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because, like I said, I'm only going to buy one blaster box now to put in the background here. I'm not even going to open it. And I'm just going to call it a day with retail. You know, I'm not one, unless the checklist is absolutely just out of this world extraordinary, as in a 2022 update, which, by the way, I heard is being stocked in some locations this week, which, if that's the case, good old Grip and Rip is on the hunt, because I want some more of that, because that has dried up uh, quicker than so the, the uh, Saharan Desert, and I want some more. I have about 15 hanger boxes of that in, two, in uh, one blaster box. Um, I would like to get more. I, I really would. Over Series 1. Listen, if I had an option to choose between 2022 Update and Series 1 2023, what do you think I'm going to choose? I mean, seriously, what do you think I'm going to choose? Uh, 2022 Tops Update, easily. That's the best set they have produced in years. In years. Print runs low. Retail odds are great. Hobby and Jumbo odds are great. And, well, as you see, everything's sold out because superior. It's a superior product. It is. And then the inferior product... 2023 Top Series 1. 
But getting back to the odds and the scalper thing, you know, I, I kind of agree with my brother here. I kind of do. I mean, they probably did this to keep it on the shelf. Now, again, the casual collectors now in the community have figured out that the product is useless. They have figured it out. Believe me, they have figured it out. Everywhere I go, everywhere I look, every comment I see on Facebook or Twitter, even my YouTube comment section, even other people's YouTube comment sections, because I read it all. I read it all. Believe me. I read it all. Everybody is saying just to leave it on the shelf. And that is what's happening. That is what's happening. I am seeing all over the place on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you can post a photo of baseball cards. I am seeing it sit on the shelves. And that is a good thing. That's a good thing because people are finally starting to realize that tops should not be the ones reaping the benefits of this. Although I'm sure they made millions of dollars off of people from Series 1 already. I'm sure of it. But still, you know, sit, let, let it sit on the shelf. Let it sit on the shelf. Please let retail sit on the shelf. I'm done. I bought that one blaster box. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I bought a couple hangers. Two blasters, one to open, one to keep, just in case Series 1 somewhat becomes valuable. But with those print runs, I don't think it will be valuable at all in the future. But you never know. A couple rookies, there's a lot of potential in that checklist. That's why I believe, I mean, like I said, like I said in all these videos, Series 1 on paper, like let's act like the print runs and the odds for retail never exist. The Series 1 checklist alone is very, very good. It's right probably underneath 2022 Tops Update in terms of deep rookie class. That's how good this set is. But like I said, there's a dark looming thunderstorm cloud looming over this release. And it's retail. It's the print runs. It's the odds of retail. And how Series 1 Jumbos sold out so quickly. They sold out literally in less than a day. The prices of those jumped up. Literally 50 plus percent in a matter of a week of that stuff. And I expect it to climb even more as the weeks go by. I don't know if they're going to print any more of that. I have no clue. The fact that they restocked it on Fanatics for a higher price tells me that more could be on the way. But I, I, I just don't know. I don't know. Now in Series 2, when Series 2 comes out, do we see more Jumbos? I guarantee you we do. Because what they're going to do is they're going to look at the data they get from their report sheets that they have looking at the graphs and everything. And they're going to see the line for retail is down here and the line for hobby is all the way up to my ceiling. Because they, they're, they're finding out pretty quickly just by sales and how things are selling that the hobby formats are selling tremendously better than the retail is. So will Tops make a change for Series 2? To where we see more jumbos, maybe less hobbies, but in, in in return, more jumbos? I don't know. I don't know. But to say that scalpers were the reason that this happened is somewhat true. It's somewhat true. But I don't agree with one thing. There's one thing that I missed and I want to cover in the end here. We weren't saying the same thing about 2022 Top Series 1. And people weren't scalping 2022 Top Series 1 either. They were scalping it maybe for a week, which in hindsight is kind of stupid because although Wander Franco did have a good game today in spring training, I think about like 3 for 3 or something like that. Series 1 from last year is still a very bad release. Compared to, compared to this year at least, Series 1 from last year is not good. Not good at all. There's one good rookie card and a couple mid-end rookies, and, and that's it. That's that's literally it. Um, you know, but still, to my point, people weren't scalping Series 1 last year, so I don't know exactly if scalpers were the reason why Tops did this. Because let's be honest here. The only product I believe that would have been scalped last year in terms of baseball would have probably been update. I mean, what else would have been scalped? Maybe a Bowman Chrome, because I saw that fly off the shelf relatively quickly. Holiday got scalped a little bit. A little, I'm not saying a lot, but a little bit it did. So maybe that. 
But at the same time, you know, I, I, I don't know. There really wasn't anything on the shelf last year that got scalped. Really nothing. And I don't expect that to change this year. I don't. If Series 1 is this bad, wait until Heritage comes out. Wait until Heritage comes out. I promise you, the Heritage odds on blaster boxes are going to be abysmal. They're going to be bad because there's not there's really no parallels in there anyways, really. It's really, for the most part, just all base cards with a throwback design. Some inserts sprinkled in there from time to time, but for the most part, like, you're just pulling all base, really. So, yeah, I expect those to sit. I do expect, though, when Heritage does inevitably release, whenever that may be, I don't know. I still, to this day, have no release date informa or information on that release. I know a lot of people ask me on that question, but unfortunately, I can't give you an answer because right now, as we're heading into March, there is legit only one release in March, and it's towards the end of March, right before opening day, and that is Platinum Chrome Anniversary, which I do expect to sell well because guess what? Before we get into the pack here, I'll tell you a little bit, tidbit of information. I don't know if you saw this or not yet, but I'll speak upon it anyways. Last year, hobby boxes for Platinum Chrome were $100, or I should say $150. Now, this year, they are $100. The light versions, I don't know about the hobby lights, but if the hobbies are cheaper, that means the lights should also be cheaper. So we're maybe looking at, lights last year, I believe, were $80. So this year, we're potentially looking at a $50 to $60 light box. As for the Jumbo Mega Box, that they did last year. I don't know if they're going to do that this year, but if, again, hobby prices are down and the light box potentially goes down, it wouldn't make no sense that those boxes would be $60 because if the light box is $60, there's no way the mega box will be $60 as well. That just doesn't make any sense. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. I'm actually genuinely curious to see what happens there. Um, the checklist is going to be decent from what I can see. And obviously, all the 2022 rookies are in there, like J-Rod, Bobby Witt, O'Neal Cruz, Wander Franca, you name it. So I do expect that set to actually sell well. Um, again, 2022 will be superior to 2023, I think. Just got to wait and see what happens, though. Just got to wait and see. Willie Adamas. Hey, O'Neal Cruz, speak of him. There you go. Pete Alonzo. Adley. There's Adley. Okay, first Adley I pulled. JT Brubaker. Is this an all-base pack yet again, dude? No way, dude. Oh my goodness. I mean, we got two... I mean, we got we got some good cards, but... <sighs> you guys know how I feel about all base packs. They gotta go. All base packs in hobby boxes have to go. They have to go. It's just... I Imagine paying $4. Although we did pull an Adley, but imagine if we didn't pull him... And put someone else in there, like you know, like a like a Mike Trout card or like something like that. Would you ever get five dollars in value back if you bought that at the store at the hobby uh, or hobby store? Absolutely not. But still, you know. With that being said, let me know what you think about this assessment. Do you believe that Tops did this to combat flipping and scalping on the secondary market, like an eBay or something like that? That's hard to see, but I do see why people would think that. But again. They, I mean, 2021 or 2022 Series 1 last year sat on the shelves, and no one said anything about scalping there. So I don't know why necessarily we're bringing up scalping here. But, I mean, the odds for Series 1 last year were what? 1 in 38, now they're 1 in 99. That's, that's a lot of, that's, that's very bad. So, I mean, I could see why people are bringing that up. You know, it is what it is. I'm not going to buy any retail, neither should you. Stick to the hobby. Buy the jumbos if you can at a reasonable price. Buy the hobby boxes while you still still can, because those will eventually go up to 100 plus here very soon. Believe me. So guys, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.